Thank you, Lord Jesus. I always greetings in the name of our blessed Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And uh, so good to see each one of you. And uh, we want to say good morning to our Facebook family and uh, to all of our social um, ministries that we have, social media, whether it may be YouTube or Instagram or with other social media. So thank you again for tuning to this broadcast, House of Faith Christian Center. Pastor Ronnie D. Simmons, Pastor of House of Faith Christian Center, where Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. And prayer is still changing me. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And uh, so again, greet you for turning into the broadcast. And go ahead and hit like and hit share and hit like and share. Uh, praise the Lord. Go ahead and just contact family members and friends and uh, uh, employees. Let them know the House of Faith Christian Center is on the air. House of Faith Christian Center, we have that threefold vision, and that is to exalt the Savior, equip the saints, and evangelize the sinner. Again, we have uh, our five purposes are evangelism, worship, fellowship, discipleship, and ministry. Praise the Lord. And we believe there's no accident that you have tuned in to our broadcast on this morning. And uh, so go ahead and again hit like and hit share, hit like and hit share uh, to all of our brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. And, and uh, thank you for a wonderful time this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, uh, as yeah, you go ahead, uh, yeah, this is Super Sunday. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And uh, here at House of Faith Christian Center, uh, we own Team Jesus side. Hallelujah. He wins all the time. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. He never loses. And so, when you know Jesus, you are on the winning side. Yeah. So praise the Lord. So this is a good opportunity to go ahead and take a few minutes and contact those family members. Um, you know who they are, mama them, daddy them, baby brother them, baby sister them, pookie them, chiquita them. Contact all the M's. Tell them House of Faith Christian Center is on the air. This is Super Sunday. And we here at House of Faith, we are on the winning team. Hey, Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. So again, Thank you again for being a part of our worship experience today. So again, go ahead and hit like and hit share, hit like and hit share in the name of Jesus. Oh, so let's go ahead and get our Bibles out and get prepared uh, for the Word of God. It's going to be so awesome today. So if you have your Bibles and, and uh, whether you may have it on your iPhones, your iPods, your iPads, uh, yeah, I will hunt wherever the word of God is. It is going to be so electrifying, and I'm so excited. Ooh, I'll tell you, praise the Lord. Don't tell me something super Sunday. Oh, my goodness. Hallelujah. So I also do want to tell you at the end of the service, we'll be taking Holy Communion. And so you want to go ahead and get your juice and, and uh, get your crackers and your bread uh, ready for that. It's going to be so awesome. In the name of Jesus, praise the Lord. So we're here at House of Faith Christian Center. We're fired up. So praise the Lord. Media, social media, I want you to hear. House of Faith, y'all fired up this morning? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. Glory to God. So we're on a winning team. We're on the winning side. So if you would, get your Bibles and go ahead and hold up your Bibles of fire. We're going to make this confession of faith. If you would say these familiar words, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I am now ready. Ready, ready, ready. To receive the dynamic, the powerful, the ever increasing, the life changing word of God. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I I boldly confess, I'll never be the same. I boldly, boldly confess, I'll never, never be the same. I boldly, boldly, boldly confess, after hearing God's word today, I'll never, never, never be the same. For that is the kingdom, and mine is the kingdom. For that is the power, and mine is the power. For that is the glory, and mine is the glory. Forever and ever and ever. For this is my receiving day in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord again. If you're watching this on Facebook Live, uh, go ahead and hit like and hit share. Hit like and hit share. So again, uh, to all of my brothers and sisters all over uh, this country, all over this nation, all over this world, to our family over in Kinshasa. 
in the Congo in Central Africa, to our brothers over to Manila, in the Philippines, Kenya, wherever you are, watch this broadcast. Praise the Lord. You get ready for this word of God. It's going to be so awesome. This year, House of Faith Christian Center, we have adopted a theme which says, A Grace to Follow God's Son in 2021. And so we're following God's Son, uh, 2021. Our scripture that we're looking at is Mark chapter 8, verse 34. Mark chapter 8, verse 34. And uh, reading from the Amplified Version, it says, And Jesus called to him uh, the throng with his disciples and said to them, If anyone intends to come after me, watch this, to come after me, let him deny himself, which means to forget, ignore, disown and lose sight of himself and his own interests and take up his cross and joining me as a disciple and siding with my party. Follow me continually, cleanly, steadfastly to me. Praise God. So we're teaching on the subject of following Jesus as our shepherd, the 23rd Psalm, following Jesus. So it says, of all the passages in the Bible, Psalms 23 may be the most quoted and the most beloved uh, in, in this Psalms 23, King David, who is referred to as a man after God's own heart, and the sweet psalmist of Israel, compares the Lord to a shepherd who lovingly attends to his flock. So let's look at Psalms 23 right now. Psalms 23, the beloved psalm. We've learned it. We've known it and learned it in Sunday school, vacation Bible school, church service. And uh, uh, God's going to speak to us through the 23rd psalm. And it says, this is a psalm of David. This is from the New King James Version. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. And we said our intent, my friend, is not just to get a revelation of the 23rd Psalm. Our intent is to get a revelation of the shepherd. Praise the Lord. So as we look at the shepherd, listen. As we look at this 23rd Psalm, we learn that Jehovah, Roi, the all-powerful, the all-knowing, the all-seeing, and the ever-present God tenderly cares for those who belong unto him. Praise the Lord. Let's look at John chapter 10, verses 2 through verse 4. In the New Living Translation, as we look at the shepherd. As we get uh, 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 follow the shepherd, as we're going to have a grace to follow God's son in 2021 as a shepherd. So in John chapter 10, verse 2 through verse 4, we see this is what John says. He says, but the one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him. And the sheep, watch this, recognize his voice and they come to him. He calls his own sheep by name, and leads them out. After he has gathered his own flock, he walks, watch this now, he walks ahead of them, and they follow him because they know his voice. Notice, the sheep do not lead the shepherd. Amen. The shepherd leads the sheep. He goes before them, and when he goes before them, watch this, your Bible says, they recognize his voice. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. So we've been looking at this 23rd Psalm. And uh, uh, we've started out and looking. It says that the Lord is my shepherd. I, I shall not want. 
And the one translation simply says this, because the Lord is my shepherd. Listen, because the Lord is my shepherd, watch this, I have everything that I need. Hallelujah. Because it's in the shepherd. Yes. Hallelujah. And we looked at the shepherd, we said the shepherd is a good shepherd. The shepherd is a great shepherd. The shepherd is a head shepherd. He's the shepherd of our of the sheep. And watch this. He knows what I need. Everything I need is in the shepherd. Mm -hmm. So, we want to pick up today with verse 2, Psalms 23, and a part of that. Now, if the shepherd knows everything that I need, the first thing that we find in Psalms 23, verse uh, uh, 2, part of this says, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. I, I just want to deal with that today. Now, watch this. The shepherd knows what I need. He is my shepherd, and I have everything that I need. So if that's true, this verse says, he makes me to lie down in green pastures, which means that as a shepherd, he knows I need to lie down. Yes. Amen. I, I just want to deal with that today. Yes. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Now, when I was looking at this, it was very interesting because two, about three and a half months ago, the life of Pastor Terry and I took a dramatic change. Because we got introduced to a little one in our household. We were enjoying the infamous stage, coming, going, basically doing what we wanted to do. And in three and a half months, things changed. <laughs> A little one came in our life. And I would truly say for the last three and a half months, it has been very interesting. The Simmons household has not been the same. This little one, he enjoys life. Amen. He has plenty, when I say plenty, plenty of energy. He enjoys to laugh. He enjoys to jump around. He enjoys to eat. He enjoys to go places. And he enjoys all those things. Full of joy. But there's one area we have a challenge with. Twice a day. And that is getting our little fella to lie down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He does not like lying down. Yeah. <laughs> and whenever it's time to lie down, it gets very interesting. Because mm -hmm. all of a sudden now, he wants everything. Yes. Mm -hmm. He wants his walk. Yes. He wants to talk. Mm -hmm. He wants to play. And he wants to do all of this when it's time for him to lie down. Yeah. He wants me to sing to him. <laughs> it started in one song, now I'm singing three songs. <laughs> because I'm trying to get him to lie down. Mm -hmm. We have a little thing here then. It's called Talk to Jacob. His little playmate. So I have to talk to Jacob. To get him to lie down. <laughs> then we had to say the prayer. And we got to pray for everybody. <laughs> we make up names to pray for. <laughs> and we do all of this because our goal is to get him to lie down. Mm -hmm. Now, he does not want to lie down. Mm -hmm. But we as parents, yeah. we as guardians, know the benefit of getting him to lie down. Yes. 
We already mentioned that just like he needs a break, we need a break too. Because sometimes when he lie down, we lie down. But he doesn't understand the importance and the essence of lying down. He doesn't understand that the benefits of it when he needs to lie down, although he does not want to lie down. Because he's very active. And he wants to know what's going on. And he wants to be involved in every situation. But there is a time where he needs two things. He needs rest and he needs refreshment. And the only way that he will receive rest and refreshment is he lie down. As I look at our message today, understanding when David pins these words that he makes me to lie down. David, who was once a shepherd, understands that sheep are creatures that are always on the move. And, and at times, because they're always moving, at times they become tired. At times they become restless. At times they become hungry. And at times they come, become agitated as sheep. And because of this, listen, a good shepherd knows exactly what the sheep needs. Why they need it. And when they need it. And he understands that in the midst of this, the sheep just needs to rest. They, they, they need to rest not only physically, but sometimes they need to rest mentally. They just need to lie down. Why? Because there's so many things that's coming at them and, and they're always moving and, 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 and so it says that, you know what, they, they need some refreshment, they need some rest, so therefore they need to lie down. Therefore, the good shepherd must make the sheep lie down, listen, on purpose, even when they do not want to lie down. You know, it's amazing about the little fellow in our house. Because he says, we says, time to lie down. He says, I don't want to lie down. I'm not tired. I'm not sleeping. And in 10 minutes, he snored. <laughs> because he doesn't understand yeah. that he needs to lie down. Yeah. But Pastor Terry and I, we understand the importance of getting him to lie down because he, he needs to rest and he also needs to read refreshment of lying down. So therefore, my friends, as I look at this comparison, Jesus Christ, who is our good shepherd, he supplies us with the substance of rest, the security of rest, and the serenity of rest. Underline those words that are so important. The substance of rest is the rest that gives you nourishment. The security of rest is the rest that gives you protection. And the serenity of rest, listen, is the rest that gives you calmness in the midst of all that's going around you. Amen. That's what the good shepherd does for his sheep. And, and I, I'm led to believe that as we look at this year, 2021, all that's going on so far, all that we have experienced, news media, CNN, CBS, ABC, NBC, Fox, Capitol Hill, election, inauguration, unrest, all that's going around, we, so even we can get caught up in what's all around us, and it's time that Jesus simply says, listen, if you're going to follow me in 2021, the first thing that you need to do is you need to learn how to lie down. Hallelujah. 
Now, it must be said that although the sheep needs to lie down, the conditions have to be right. Because your Bible says that he makes me lie down not just anywhere. He makes us to lie down where? In a particular place called green pastures. Mm -hmm. Now, over in Israel, and I'm sure Mr. Merrill can testify to this, is that unlike some of the pictures you may see where everything is green and so forth, that's not always where it is. Yeah. Sometimes the land is parched. Sometimes the land is rocky. Sometimes it's infested with disease. And the shepherd must particularly find a particular place where the sheep can lie down without any interference. And that particular place the shepherd is seeking out is a place called green pasture. It's a beautiful place, it's a perfect place, but he, he's got to look at, he's got to go before that. It doesn't automatically just come. He searches it out. Green passage. What is green passage? Green passage, my friends, is the blessing. It's the blessing. So the sheep lie down, watch this now, not just anywhere, the sheep must lie down in the blessing. What is the blessing? The blessing is an empowerment to prosper. It is a, listen, it is positioned to be endued to, to, to succeed in everything that you do. So the shepherd says, I want you to lie down where the blessings is. Not to lie down where there's poverty. Not to lie down where there's confusion. Not to lie down where there is disarray. But to lie down in the blessing where you can be empowered to prosper. And you be endued to succeed in everything that you do. That's where I want you to get your rest and get your refreshment in the blessing. And the only way you're going to get it is you've got to learn to lie down. Now. The Lord makes us lie down because everything that the Lord does for us, he has a purpose and a plan for us. Yeah. Look at Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, familiar scripture. Yeah. A plan for you to lie down. It says this, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not disaster to give you a future and a hope. And this plan is to lie down to get rest and get refreshment in the blessing. And sometimes it may not necessarily be just a physical lie down. Sometimes it may be a spiritual lie down to say, you know what? It's time for you to get away from everything. Get away from the news. Get away from the chit chatter. Get away from everything and just get in me and get quiet and get focus on me. And when you do that, my friends, you will get rest and you'll get refreshment, but you'll learn the value of just lying down. Amen. Yes. Have you know sometimes you're just so busy doing so much so forth, you know, and, 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 and you don't take a rest? And then you get on the phone and you brag about it? Child, I've done a thousand things today. I didn't even take a break. And that's like some of the grand home. <laughs> now that's the way the world works. Yeah. <laughs> They're the hustle. They're the bustle. Yeah. They're the going all the time. Uh -huh. But for the sheep uh -huh. who follow the shepherd, we know there's some time when we just say enough is enough. I just need to get quiet. I need to get by myself to get a presence of the Lord where the blessings is so I can get rest and get refreshment for the journey. Because when you get tired, you know, you may do a lot of stupid stuff. <laughs> you know, try to do this and mess it up, burn it up, cut it up, mess it up. And you just say, you know what, this is not working. I just need to get somewhere and let mommy say, just get somewhere and sit down. Yeah. <laughs> now, let's talk about.
a little bit about sheep. There are four factors, oftentimes, that prevent the sheep from lying down. Four. Maybe a lot more, but I just want to look at these four. I want to listen, listen to me now, social media. There are four. I call them fear, friction, flies, and famine. <laughs> And when these conditions are there, it's very difficult for the sheep to lie down. Let's talk about fear. Whenever the sheep, the sheep are very fearful, it's very difficult for the sheep to lie down. And, 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 and one of the things is that when things are around, when the sheep eyes are always moving all the time. And instead of keeping their eyes on the shepherd, they're looking at the conditions. And it will allow the sheep to get into fear. And they no longer realize that the shepherds that protect them, they are now realizing that there are things all around us that will, will destroy them, and they get into the fear, and therefore they won't lie down. And then another thing they don't lie down because they, some of them understand that if they lie down and they get in the wrong position, their feet will be sticking straight up. And they won't be able to get up. Why? Because they have a fear. And I just wonder how many Christians who won't get rest in Jesus because they have been fear for all the things that's going on. Child. I, I'm afraid they won't have enough uh, uh, vaccine for me to take for the coronavirus. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. I guess I'll just, you know, take me some 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 bleach or something. I don't know. Like what? Crazy stuff. Why? Because they get fearful. Their conversation is based on fear all the time. They listen at the 6 o'clock and the 10 o'clock news, and it puts them in fear all the time. They're talking too much time on the phone. They listen to other people who don't know what they're talking about, and it gets them to get in fear, and because of fear, they will not lie down. Amen. Yeah. And you can tell them when you talk to them on the phone, in their voice, it's fear-based. Child, I won't have enough money. Child, I won't have enough medicine. Child, I won't have enough food. Child, I won't have enough friends. I just won't have enough. They're in fear and they will not lie down. Why? Because they're not keeping their eyes on the shepherd. So that's the first factor that will keep a sheep from lie down. The second factor that will keep a sheep from lie down is what we call friction. Because all sheep don't get along with all sheep. I'm going to preach up here today. Right. <laughs> and sometimes they, excuse the expression, begin to butt heads. Some of y'all get that one, right mm -hmm. and, 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 and they don't get along with other sheep because they don't like the, the way other sheep look. And they feel that the other sheep is getting more attention from the shepherd than they're getting from the shepherd. So therefore, they got to call some stuff. And they get together in their little cliques with other little sheep. And that's a bad situation. <laughs> and there's friction with the sheep. And when there's friction with the sheep, the sheep will not lie down. They mad at other sheep, don't even know where they mad at other sheep. They mad at the shepherd. Oh, I won't get with that now. <laughs> and they say, you know, we're not going to follow the shepherd today. Why? Because the shepherd didn't look at us right. And so there's friction, and so when it's time for the sheep to lie down, they're like, I ain't lying down with you. I'm going to keep on moving. Bad business. And then the third factor that keeps the sheep from lying down is what I call the flies and the fleas. Now, over in Israel, flies and fleas are very prevalent. And they come, and many times they want to rest themselves on the nose, on the forehead of the sheep. Now, it doesn't kill the sheep, it just agitates the sheep. It's just those little small things that, 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 that just get under their skin. It gets under their wool. Look, look, little small stuff, all right? You know, just a little, you know, like a fly. See, a fly's not big, 
but it can be an agitation. And I, I'm not even talking about how many people are easy to get agitated over the small stuff. The fleas and the flies. And they're, mm, 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 mm. and they're upset. Don't even know why they're upset. It's because of the flies. And they'll get mad at another sheep because they don't know how to get rid of the flies and the fleas they got on. So now they become agitated. I got to preach up here. Praise the Lord. But well, the sheep, because they can't get rid of the flies that causes agitation. I don't, don't you raise up. Do you know people who easy get agitated? <laughs> See, I'm not talking about by the cougars. We're going to deal with them and the wolves and the, and, 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 and the bears. We don't want, we want to deal with them. I'm talking about just a little fly. You know, those, have, you, have you ever, have you ever got to hang me up before? Huh? You ever got to hang me up before? That's a thing about that little man. And did you know it'll drive you crazy all day long until you get rid of it? See, it's a fly. It's something that agitates you. Somebody said, how you doing? What you talking about? What's so good about it? Well, you're not really mad at them. It's just the flies that cause you to get agitated. So you won't lie down. And then the fourth is the famine. You become so famine, famished so much that you just you just go crazy. I mean, you know, I mean, you're so hungry, you, you, you're past hungry, you can't even lie down and eat, you're just so hungry. <laughs> Why is that? Because famine, listen, when, when you become so famine, you focus so much of trying to find out where it's coming from instead of being focused on the shepherd who will supply your every need. And these are the four areas, my friend, that will keep the sheep from lying down. But I'm so glad that we have a good shepherd, Amen. a great shepherd, and a head shepherd who comes and says, it's time for you to lie down, you need your rest, and you need your refreshment for the journey. Because when you're tired, many times you can't go forward. And if you're going to move and go forward when the shepherd comes to speak, you're going to need to be refreshed and you need to rest and you're going to need to lie down. And I believe that this year God has some great things in store for House of Faith, Christian centers, some places that we've never been before, some things we've never did before. Praise the Lord. And he said, I've got it. I'm a positional shepherd. I've got to get you in a position. Praise the Lord for the journey. But before we can go ahead, I want you to lie down because, listen, you can get the rest. Now, great thing about it, sometimes a good shepherd, sometimes the good shepherd will come and lie down with you. I'm thinking about the little one that's in our house. He has a habit sometimes of waking up at 4 o'clock in the morning. Did I hear that? I said 4 o'clock in the morning <laughs> on a Saturday. And, 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 and sometimes he'll say, get up, get up, get up. And we'll say like, go back to bed, go back to bed, go back to bed. And he doesn't do that, but sometimes we realize the only thing that will calm down is says, come get in bed with us. And once he lies down with us and gets in the bed with us, he feels a sense of comfort. He feels a sense of sereneness. He feels a sense of deep protection. And he's so good, you know, praise the Lord, because he realized that his shepherds are there to take care of him. And he's protected. Well, isn't that just like Jesus? Praise the Lord. Something says, he'll say, come lay, lie down, come get some rest, come get some refreshment. He says, but guess what? Because I'm a good shepherd, I'm not just going to make you do it by yourself. I'll get there with you. I'll get in the boat with you. Praise the Lord. I'll get in the situation with you. I'll get in the battle with you. I'll get in the confrontation with you. You're not by yourself. You're not going to go to this thing alone. I'm there with you. So when you lie down, I lie down with you. Ah, hallelujah! Because he's the good shepherd. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, question. Why does Jesus provide us with the necessary rest that we need? Answer. We need the rest. Now, this is the rest is. The rest, my friends, is the confidence 
and the assurance and what he has already promised and provided. See, when I'm resting in, 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 in Jesus, I'm just resting in what he's already said he's going to do. I'm resting already in his promises. Praise the Lord. I'm resting already in the blessings. Over in Ephesians chapter 1, it says, listen, he has already blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. The blessings is already there. I just rest in the blessings. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. I rest in the promises. He said he'll never leave me or forsake it. I just rest in that. Yes. He says, I'm more than you're more than a conqueror. I rest in that. He said, you are the head and not the tail. I rest in that. He said, you are above and not beneath. I rest in that. He said, you are going to be the lender and not the borrower. I rest in that. Rest in that. He said, you are healed, praise the Lord, by Jesus Christ. I rest in that. He said, I will supply your every need according to my riches in Christ Jesus. Guess what? I just rest in that. Amen. Amen. I, I, I rest in that. And when I rest in it, it gets rid of the fear, it gets rid of the friction, it gets rid of the flies, and it gets rid of the family. Amen. <laughs> and then now I can just lie down. Mm -hmm. Now, let's look at the three stages of rest. We're going to wrap this up. Glory to God. Now, number one, we're going to talk about the commencement of rest. Then we're going to talk about the continuation of rest. And then we're going to finish in looking at the comfort of rest. <laughs> well, I tell you, when you get revelation of this right here, I want to tell you, listen, your worry-free days are over. Your stress-free days are over. When you understand the commencement of rest, the continuation of rest, and the comfort of rest. So I'm just resting in the promises of Jesus. I'm resting in the, uh, the, the finished works of Jesus. Because at Calvary's cross, Jesus said, no, this is what Jesus says. He says, it's finished. Yeah. So I just rest in that. Yeah. I tell the devil, it's finished. Yeah. I tell all the demons in hell, it's finished. If Jesus said it's finished, I just rest in that. Yeah. <laughs> so I can try to lie down in that. Now watch this. The commencement of rest. Listen, Jesus Christ is the only way to find true rest. Look at Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. He's the only way. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. In the New Living Translation, this is what it says. It says, then Jesus says, watch this. Jesus, see, Jesus said, Jesus, Jesus said, who is the good shepherd, who is the great shepherd, who is the chief shepherd, who is the positional shepherd, who puts in the position, this is what the position he says. Jesus says, watch this, come to me. All you are weary and carry heavy burdens, watch this, and I will give you rest. Now, we have to define what it means Jesus says, come to me. Because that sounds like an invitation. Yeah. Like, come to dinner. Mm -hmm. Come on to my house. So that's an invitation. So we have to understand what it means, come to me. Because if you read that too fast, you won't get a revelation of that. And I just don't want you to be religious. Mm -hmm. I want you to get concept. What what, what was Jesus talking about when he says, come to me? When Pastor Deacon got 2,000 years ago, what do you mean, come to me? Yeah, Pastor, I got nervous. Yeah, Pastor, I get, I get upset. I get agitated. I get fearful. I, I, I get friction. I, I get famished. Yeah, I understand that right now, but uh, how do I really mean in 2021, if I'm going to follow the son in 2021, what does it mean, come to me? That's it. And we've said it over and over again. We'll continue to say it over. Come to Jesus means, number one, come to who he is. You have to know who he is. 
He is the Son of God, sent by God. He represents God. He is the image of the invisible God. He says, whoever seen me has seen the Father. To the see God, you see Jesus. So you come to Jesus to get to the Father. That's what it is. So I come, to, I didn't get God, so I got to go to Jesus. Now what do you mean? I come to who he is. I come to what he said. I come to what he taught. I come to what he commanded. See, that's what I'm coming to. So I got to know what Jesus said. I got to know what Jesus taught. And I got to know what Jesus commanded. And listen, if I don't know what Jesus said, I don't know what Jesus taught, if I don't know what Jesus commanded, how can I come to him? Now I can come to religion, but religion, religion won't get the answer. Religion will not make me lie down. See? Religion will not give me rest. Really, religion really will frustrate you. Because you be doing everything in the church. Going from this committee, going this committee, yeah. going to three services on Sunday, yes. and then going to work on Monday bed. <laughs> ain't talking about Jesus. You talking about how tired you was on Sunday because you was in church all day. Yeah. You definitely get in the red. You tired. Mm -hmm. Now I didn't say tired. You tired <laughs> because you don't know what Jesus says. But when you focus on what Jesus says. Focus on what he taught you. Focus on what he commanded you to do. See, you're not coming to Jesus. Now watch this. Third, you're coming to what he did for you on the cross. What did he do for you on the cross? See, he forgave you of all your sins. It's finished. Your past sins, your present sins, and future sins. That's what it means to come to Jesus. You've been delivered. See, you come to that. I am delivered. No, I'm going to get delivered. I am delivered. You're forgiven. You're delivered. You've been set free. Amen. You're free in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Free to worship him. Free to serve him. See, that's what it means to come to Jesus. And many times, the church has not taught that to people. We just say, come to Jesus. And people say, what does that mean? I don't know. Yeah. I say, when have you read something about Jesus? The only time I read about Jesus when I come to church on Sunday. That's not coming to Jesus. You got to do this every day. You got to come to Jesus every day. You got to come hear what He says every day. You have to come hear what He talk teaches you every day. You got to come when He commands you every day, every day. Yes. That's Amen. what needs to come to Him every, every, every day. Watch this. You who are weary carry heavy burdens. And watch this. When you do come to Jesus, here's the promise. I'm going to give you rest. So, watch this. If I'm carrying heavy burdens all the time, I'm just telling you, I'm not resting in Jesus. Amen. If I'm complaining all the time, Amen. I'm not resting in Jesus. Listen, if I've got fear, if I've got friction, if I've got flies and fleas, and if I've got famines, it just let me know I'm not coming to Jesus. Because Jesus said, when you come to me, here's the promise, I'm going to give you rest. Hallelujah. I'm going to give you assurance, I'm going to give you confidence that I'm going to take that. And I like this right here because I said two things come involved. You get the pardoning of your sins, and you get peace with God. Amen. I'm forgiven. Stop beating yourself up. Give me now, Facebook. Stop letting stuff of mistakes of the past continue to haunt you all the time. Come to Jesus, let him forgive you of your sins, pardon you of your sins, say you've been forgiven of your sins and you're pardoned, and now since you've been pardoned, now I give you my peace. Amen. Ooh, glory to God. Because you can't get the peace until you get the pardon. Amen. <laughs> Well, how'd I get that? You come to what Jesus has to say. Not what folks say about you. Not what the news says about you. Not what family and friends say about you. It's what Jesus says about you. He says you are forgiven, so you come to me. 
So people say, I got a problem with you. I said, you know what? Take it up with Jesus. Yeah. I said, every day that he don't have one with me, so why do you have one with me? <laughs> Glory to God. That's why I come to Jesus. I need his pardon and I need his peace. Yeah, I ain't come to Jesus. Because we don't get it all right all the time. So we need to go to Jesus. And Jesus just forgive us. Praise the Lord. Jesus forgive people. It's amazing some people want Jesus to forgive them, but they won't forgive other people. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I don't raise your hand. You know folks like that? They want Jesus to forgive them, but they ain't gonna forgive you that. Because I ain't gonna forgive you. And that's why they're not resting. That's why they're confused all the time. That's why they complain all the time, and they need to just uh, lie down. Number two, after you get the commencement of rest, now you need to get the continuation of rest. Look at verse 29 and verse 30. Jesus, this is Jesus, said, he says, take my yoke upon you, let me teach you. <laughs> he says, let me teach you. Now, don't raise your hand, but how many Christians you know who tells you that they don't need to go to church anymore? Because they don't need to be taught anything. They know it all. Now, if Jesus says he want to teach me something, I'm going to listen to Jesus. Yes. Every opportunity someone's going to teach me something about Jesus, listen, I'm going to be there. Amen. My pen, paper, my highlighter, I'm taking some notes because I want Jesus to teach me. But she who don't want to follow the shepherd. Say, I don't need anybody teach me anything. I know it all. But when they get into trouble, would you pray for me? Let me get some water right here. So we're trying to teach people how to rest. We're trying to teach people how not to get upset about what they hear on 5.30, 6 o'clock, 10 o'clock bad news. And they can tell you all that's going on in the news, but they can't tell you one thing that Jesus said. <laughs> Not one thing. And they wonder why they got problems. Jesus said, let me teach you why. He said, because I am humble and gentle at heart. Watch this. And you'll find what? You'll find what? Rest. You'll find what? Rest. You'll find what? Rest. You'll find rest. See, Jesus said, if you come to me and they teach you, you'll find, you, listen, you won't get all upset about every little thing. Amen. And I know this sounds cruel, but sometimes Jesus says, when you come to me, you'll learn how to get over some stuff. He says, because my yoke is what? Easy to bear, and the burdens I give you is light. Yeah. That's continuation of risk. Now watch this. I got this here. It says, this leads to a refreshed and stress-free life. Saints, I was loving this. I am not going to let anybody, anything stress me out. For two reasons. Number one, it's against the teachings of Jesus. And secondly, it won't benefit me at all. So guess what? I replace stress with rest. Let me say something I get this. You hear this? I replace stress with rest. Time, I'm just so stressed out. Woo, these people in my job don't stress me out. Child, these people in my house don't stress me out. These little children, these little run rats, these little snuck crackers don't stress me out. Child, my supervisor don't stress me out. Child, the government don't stress me out. Child, Congress don't stress me out. Child, you don't stress me out. They get stressed out. <laughs> and they just need rest. Would you say this up to me? Say this. No more stress. No more stress. I choose rest. I choose rest. Listen, if you're watching this by Facebook, would you type it in there right now? No more stress. I need rest. And I, I need rest. I need for the shepherd to make me to lie down. Because I, I want to live a stress-free life. 
And if you don't listen, if you don't get rest, you will stress will work work on you. It, this, it, it, he, said, what he, said. he said, you'll find rest to your souls. Your souls, your mind, your thoughts, your emotions, your personality, and your will. Your emotions be everywhere. Yeah. Your personality, you one way, one way, and this is another way. Your emotion, they're going everywhere. Why? Because you need rest. And you have to rest in the promise of Jesus that he gives to you. He said, I want to give you rest. You were not designed to carry stress. Young people, you were not designed to let school stress you out. You just rest. You study, you do all that you can, you get all the information, and you say, you just rest in that. But you'll let no teacher stress you out. That's not God. You'll let no job stress, child, and job stress you out. All right, so stress, why don't you quit? Oh, well, uh, 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 uh. I say, if it's stressing y'all's that much, won't you quit? Get another one. You know why? Because the lad three jobs stress you out. <laughs> so it's not necessarily the job that stress you out. See, I just have this way I'm, I don't care where I am, what it is, I'm going to let this situation stress me out. I don't care where it is. It can be in the desert somewhere. I ain't going to stress out. I don't know. I mean, I found a cactus. Juice, you got to come out of that cactus in the name of Jesus. And some of you let little stuff stress you out. And you can't lie down. And you're like, sheep. You got to be moving all the time. And sometimes you're moving and you're not going anywhere. You're like, you, you like the swinging door, a lot of emotions, but not going anywhere. But Jesus says, I want you to rest because I got to get you ready for the change. And then the third and final one is the comfort of rest. Oh my goodness. Not only do you have the commencement of rest, not only do you have the continuation of rest, but now you have the comfort of just resting in the promises of Jesus. Now, do I mean I don't take care of business? Yeah, you take care of business. Stay that we take care of. You take care of this. I'm just saying, you know, I ain't, they don't do anything. You know? People take tearing up stuff, but I'm just resting. No, 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 you take care of stuff. Okay? You, you take care of business. Not, I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is that don't let this situation get you so stressed out where you can't hear the voice of Jesus. Because listen, Jesus says, I'm humble and gentle. Notice he says, at heart. That simply means that when he went to the temple and they were buying and selling in the temple, yes. and the Bible says he took a whoop, yes. whip, mm -hmm. turned over the money changers, yes. they ran out, left their money behind. And he still went stressed out. Oh, glory to God. You mean to tell me, Jesus, I can have a Holy Ghost righteous anchor and still not be stressed out? He says, yes, you can. Why? Because you listen to the Father. And you still listen. You're humble. You're just at heart. So, man, listen. It don't mean that people just walk over you. Because nobody walked over Jesus. But he knew how to rest. In the Father's promises. Hallelujah. Lord, so if someone come mess with you and try to do you some harm, whatever it is, it don't mean they just to do anything with you. You say, you know what, you keep on, you're going to rest in peace. <laughs> 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 All right, I keep praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I got something to help you rest, too. <laughs> brother Smith and Brother West, they will help you rest. <laughs> <laughs> See, but you won't let people stretch you out. Amen. Now, what if I try to do harm, harm to you? You know, you're going to get hurt. I'm going to take myself. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to stretch out. I'll tell you right now. You come over here, you're going to get some of this. <laughs> it's going to be peace be still. Mm -hmm. <laughs> peace of the steel. Praise the Lord. But I'm not going to stress out. I'm not going to be worried what it is. I'm going to take care of business. 
See what I'm saying? As Christians, you can still rest in the promise of the Lord and still, and still be bold in your, your conviction. But you don't walk around worrying and all and threatening people and you know all this. No, you don't do all that. See, you'll find rest in him. So let's look at, again, the comfort of rest. It, it is abundance of the variety of supply. Look at John 14, verse 23. When you have this, this comfort of rest, it's a fellowship that goes on with the Father, with the Son, all the time. You fellowship with Him in your house, in your job, your business, uh, your finances, when you work out. You, you, you're fellowshipping with the Father all the time. Look what it says. It's Jesus Christ, He says, all who love me will do what I say. Now, that goes against tradition of religion. Because most people will tell you is that you can do what you want to do and the Father is going to love you all the time. Well, here's the thing. He will, he will show that love, but you won't experience that love. Yeah. The love is there. But in order for you to extradite that love that comes from the Father, Jesus says, you have to do what I say. Mm -hmm. See, here in House of Faith, House of Faith, we don't teach greasy grace mm -hmm. and sloppy about it. So anybody who thinks that Pastor Simmons said, grace means you can just do what you want to do, and it don't matter, that ain't come from me. Amen. <laughs> that you're going to experience God's love, he's going to love you all the time, you just do everything that you have, the love is there. Yeah. But to receive the love, Jesus said, you got to do what I say. Amen. And there are people who say, you don't have to do what Jesus says, and you're going to still get the blessing. I don't know where they got the teaching from, but it didn't come from him. And I have not been preaching that for 40 years. He says, my father, watch this, my father, my father will love them and will come and make a home with each of them when they do what Jesus says. Yes. This is how you're going to find a true rest. Just make a say, you know what, I'm going to do what Jesus says. Yeah, what y'all saying, I'm going to do what Jesus says. I'm going to do what Jesus says. Now, there's amazing people can do what the CDC says. They can do what the politician says. They can do what the doctor says. They can do what the lawyer says. Isn't it amazing someone can go into a bank and give them that social security number? And don't even think anything about it. But when they come to the church, pastor too demanding. Who he think he is going to ask me to do something like that? Who he think he is? You didn't say anyone went to the bank. You say I went to the doctor. Here's a man you never met before. Don't know anything about him, his background. He tell you, take out your clothes. You take everything off. <laughs> Woo, I'm going to preach up in here. Buck naked, standing up. Take everything off. Don't know who he is. <laughs> but when the pastor say something, who he think he is? <laughs> preach, pastor. Jesus says, when you do what he says, his father will love you and will come and make his own with each of you. Jesus wants to be in your residence. He wants to be in your situation. He wants to be in your body. He wants to be in your finances. He wants to be in your relationship. He wants to show you how much he loves you, but you have to listen to what he says and get some rest. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. <laughs> and then the last one we'll close out. The comfort of rest. Not only do you have fellowship, but he'll give you some spiritual understanding of some things. Look in John chapter 7, verse 17, verse 18. I want to thank you again for listening to this message. I pray it's been a blessing to you. I, I want you to get a revelation of the good shepherd in your life. When you follow him. See, just don't follow religion. Don't just follow the denomination. Don't follow just the church. Follow the shepherd. Listen to his voice. What is he saying to you as we go through this year 2021? So in John chapter 7, verse 17, verse 18, he says, anyone who wants to do the will of God will know whether my teaching is from God or is merely my own. Oh, you know. Now watch verse 18. Those who speak for themselves want to glorify only for themselves. 
But a person who seeks to honor the one who sent him speaks the truth, not lies. Amen. Hallelujah! Pastor Simmons is always pointing people to Jesus. What did Jesus say? What did Jesus teach? What did Jesus command? But people say, you know, that's not enough. I want more. I got to be entertained. I, I got to have the, you know, the dog and pony show. I got to have, you know, food, food, the dog, and both and, and of the clown up here. I'm just pointing people to Jesus. 40 years, been pointing people to Jesus. I said, do what Jesus said. Come with Jesus. Follow me as I follow Christ. If I'm following Christ, follow me. Now if I follow Christ, don't follow me. But tell me what Jesus says. Well, that's not enough. I can't help you anymore. Because listen, when you listen to Jesus, hear his voice. Follow him. Hallelujah. He'll be the one who will bring you out of every situation. And he'll be the one that says, take some rest in my promises. Take some rest in my abundance. Take some rest in my grace. Take some rest in my blessings. Take some rest in my breakthrough. Take some rest in everything that I have. I want to lavish you with so much love. I want to give you so much. Listen, but guess what? You've got to take confidence in who I am, what I said, what I taught, and what I would do. Because I am your good shepherd. I am your great shepherd. I am your chief shepherd. I position you as a shepherd, so therefore I will make you better. Now, here's the thing about it is, he, 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 he makes us lie down, but he doesn't force us to lie down. Amen. See, he's not like the little one that we have in our house that we have to force him to do something. But he gives us so much instructions. He gives us so much that as a sheep, I said, you know what? If he wants me to lie down, I'm going to lie down. Because when I lie down, he can talk to me. When I lie down, he can rub my head. When I lie down, he can minister to me. When I lie down, I, I get away from the cares of this world. And I get away from the hustles and the bustles and the vicissitudes of life. And I, and get away, I just get away, you know, and I just cross, close my eyes and I say, I'll just rest in your promises. Yes. Amen. And in a sense, I said, nothing else matters. I, I'm not get caught up. Yeah, I'll take care of this, but I just want to rest in you, Jesus. I just want to rest in you. Rest in who you are. Rest in what you said. Rest in what you taught. Rest in your promises. Because you're the shepherd who positions me and will make me right now. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's done with you. Lie down doesn't mean you don't take your responsibility. You take your responsibility. But it becomes stretch for you. And you say, Shepherd, give me the wisdom. How to accomplish this. Let me spend time with you. See, it's almost like the bear in the mark. We're not critical of the but Martha is very good. It's you. But Mary realized, you know what, it was the time just to sit with Peter Jesus and listen to his words. And then once you listen to his words, then you get up and he'll show you how to take care of that situation. Because Martha was just so upset that Mary was not happy. And she thought she was much in serving whatsoever. But because Mary sat down listening to Jesus, I'm sure. Mary got up and said, you know what, guys? This is going to be a buffet meal. I'll put it out, you feed yourself. And so he'll show you ways how to get things done efficiently, stress-free. I'm talking about other things you need to get done. There's other things you get done. But he'll show you, I want to do this stress-free. I want to show a better way how to do those things. And that's what I want to find out. I want to get it done. Sometimes he'll bring people in your life and help you. Amen. He'll show you a people. He says, call them. Yeah. 
They have the knowledge, they have the intuition. And they can help you. They can get to the answer. But see, this one talking about resting in here. Yeah. A better way to do it. Amen. We're going to take our professions right now. And again, our goal is not just to give you a revelation of the 23rd Psalm, but to get you a revelation of the shepherd. That as a positional shepherd, he wants to position you to a place where you get answers to your questions and solutions to your problems. Stress free. Worry free, that you have. And you will learn how to enjoy life instead of just endure life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. No, if you are not being transformed, then you are not following Jesus as your perfect shepherd. And I want you to change me. Jesus, you does every, you do everything for a purpose. Change me to be more like you because you are the perfect shepherd. So let's take our six confessions regarding Father Jesus, our personal shepherd. Number one, say this. I confess, I confess that, Jesus Christ that Jesus Christ is my personal shepherd, my personal and, shepherd. I him, and I will follow him. Number two, so I confess, I confess that, in Christ, that in Jesus Christ, he makes me, he makes me to, lie down to lie down because I need rest. Because I need rest. This rest Involves confidence and assurance in the finished works of Jesus Christ. Number three, so I confess that in the commencement of rest, Jesus Christ is the way to find true rest. Number four, so I confess that Jesus Christ, he gives me rest by instruction and not by force. Number five, so I confess that in Jesus Christ, I can live a refreshed and stress-free life. And number six, so I confess that I am following Jesus as my personal shepherd and my life is being transformed. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, before I leave our prayer commitment, I'll, I'll begin this message to talk about the little in our house who does not want to lie down. But if you can see him before he lies down, and after he takes his rest and he gets up, he's almost a different child. Because he'll get up after his rest, he, he, he'll get up, I mean, even if the night he'll get up, I mean, finally, good morning! <laughs> Hello! Oh, Ronnie, you sleep good last night? He's like a different person. Because what? He got his rest. But before that, oh my goodness. He's bumping into stuff and everything and all, and all kinds of stuff and all. And we would say, it's time for you to take your rest. You need to get rest, you need to get repentance. That's what Shepherd does to us. The things are not working. But we are spiritually run into stuff. He just simply says, it's time to lie down. Get your rest. And when you get up, you'll be so refreshed. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let's take our prayer commitment. Ready? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that Jesus Christ is my personal shepherd, and I will follow him. I thank you that because he is my personal shepherd, he makes me lie down in green pastures because I need rest. This rest involves confidence and assurance in the finished works of Jesus Christ, and I can only find true rest in Jesus as he gives it to me by instruction and not by force. This rest will allow me to live a refreshed and stress-free life and because he is my personal shepherd, my life is being transformed. As I realize this, I understand, Father, that you've given me a grace to follow your son in 2021. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Now listen, if you're watching this broadcast, by Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, whatever social media, this Jesus wants you to find rest in him. What is that? Confidence. Assurance. Not being stretched out. 
not being worried, not being bothered by stuff. Yes, take care of business, but don't let that stuff bother you. And it only comes through the good shepherd. And if you've never made Jesus Christ your personal Lord and Savior, I want to give you that opportunity to do that today. Again, he will not force himself on you, but he will only instruct you with his love. And so you can say, Jesus, I come to you right now. I admit that I'm a sinner. I believe you died on the cross for my sins, and I repent of my sins, and now I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. Come into my life. Change and transform me to be able to make me to lie down so I can find the rest, I can find the refreshment, I can find the peace, the joy, and the confidence, assurance in you. Just say that prayer right now. Father God, thank you. I received Jesus as my good shepherd. And I'm ready to lie down in his promises. I give my life to Jesus today. Receive me into your family. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, my friend, if you just prayed that prayer, I want to say congratulations. Welcome to the family of God. Welcome to the sheep of God. And Jesus will be your good shepherd, your great shepherd, and your chief shepherd. Thank you for making that decision. Now, here's a couple of things we're going to do. Listen, first thing we're going to get excited about that, yeah. that you're now in the family of God. Yeah. And we want to hear from you. Listen, there's a phone number that right on the screen, two, area code 615-223-0420. Listen, it doesn't matter where you're calling from, whether you're locally, nationally, internationally, dial that number, all right? And we want to hear from you. And, and, and just, just share your testimony. He says, you know what? I decided that I needed some rest. Family members want me to go this way. And friends want me to do this. And I was being tossed and turned everywhere. And I could find no rest, no peace. But now I find it in Jesus. So give us that testimony. If no one answers the phone, leave your phone number and your name. And someone from our ministerial staff will get back in contact with you. Hallelujah. And give you further instructions. So again, thank you again. Congratulations to you for now into the family of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Well, glory to God. We will continue in worship of the Lord. Thank you for that word. Did you bless that word? Get that word. I enjoyed it. Did y'all enjoy that word? I said, did y'all enjoy that word? I did. Hallelujah. Praise God. So we're going to continue on. Praise the Lord. Remember, resting in the finished work of Jesus. And one of the things that Jesus did, Jesus says, in a sense, listen, I, I want to give you something. To remember me. That when, listen, when friction, when fear, when, when, when famine, when, when flies and things come again, you need to have something that you can sustain you. And that is my body and my blood. And it is through Holy Communion. Praise the Lord. So we're going to take Holy Communion at this particular time that we have. Lord Jesus. The Bible says on the night when Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread. And after he had given thanks, he blessed and said, Taking this is my body, which is broken for you. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. And then he took the blood, the juice, and he says, This is a new testament. As often as you do this, you do this in remembrance of me. And so listen, we come in the house of faith to partake of the Lord's Supper, the body and blood of the Lord Jesus. And so listen, if you're watching this, you want to go home and, I mean, uh, go in your cabin, in your refrigerator, what, get you some juice, get you some crackers, some bread, whatever it is. And we want to take home, home communion. So we're going to go ahead and pass out here. You go ahead and get it. Praise the Lord. And we want you to focus on Jesus. Remember, the, the bread, the body of Jesus, the blood, the juice, the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Out of our blood, the Lord and Savior. See, you can rest in the promises of Jesus. Rest. I'm talking about living a stress-free life. In the midst of all that's going on, all that's going on, the news, the media, television, internet, job, family, friends, circumstances, I mean, all that coronavirus, all, all that, you can live a stress-free life 
when you allow it to lie down and rest in the promises of Jesus. It's for you. See, who told you you had to be stressed out? That is a lie from the pit of hell. You can live a stress-free life like that. And still take care of business. Still be righteous. Still be bold in your belief. Your prayer life stronger. You can still experience it, but you're resting in Jesus. It's not you're weak. You're really strong. And you're humble. Humble is simply means that you set your will down to the will of the Father. And you become gentle. Hallelujah. But when it's time to be forceful, you're forceful as well. How do you do that? Resting in Jesus. Lying down in his promises. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And allow him to do it. Those precious moments. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You got that now? We're going to go ahead and we're going to take of this. And remember, you'll be so strengthened. And I believe that revelation is going to flow to you. To you. And he'll show you how you rest in him. You get quiet. The bloody quiet time. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Listen, I know it seems like I, I, I talk a lot, but I want to tell you I'm more quiet than I am when I talk. The most time I talk, I can talk. But sometimes I get quiet. Sometimes I almost say a word. Sometimes my home, I just go upstairs sometimes and just, 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 just get quiet for a little while. Just go here. Yeah. What I'm trying to do, I'm going to download things to show me how to do some things that maybe I don't know how to do it in that. Show me how to be a better husband, a, a, a better father, a better example, a better pastor, a better person. Someone who rest in that. Thank you, Lord Jesus. My life is being transformed. I'm not set up for who I am right now. There's so much more God wants to do with me. And there's so much more God wants to do with you. But you gotta, you gotta rest in that as well to do that. And then you'll start seeing people, not in your own eyes. You start seeing people in the eyes of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And when you hear stuff, you know, it, 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 it'll, it'll break your heart, but you'll simply say, you know what? Jesus, they just need to rest in you. Y'all, our nation needs to rest in Jesus. So I'm going to tell you. If you need to rest in Jesus, that's my prayer. My prayer about president, new president, vice president. Let them be a president and vice president rest in Jesus. That cabinet, let that cabinet rest in Jesus. Let Congress, senators and U.S. representatives, instead of fighting, digging among one and each other, let them learn how to rest in Jesus. Supreme Court, rest in Jesus. Governors and mayors, head of departments in this nation, Political leaders, spiritual leaders, all of us. Teach us how to rest in Jesus. World leaders, teach us how to rest in Jesus to do that. And it comes to the body and blood of Jesus. Praise the Lord. So let's talk about bread. Bread represents the broken body of Jesus. And the Bible says, by his stripes, we are here. Let us eat. The juice represents the shed blood of Jesus, which is the shed blood forgiveness of our sins. We are forgiven past tense, present tense, and future tense. Let us not drink. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. Well, we're going to continue on. Thank you, Regis, for your obedience. We appreciate that. You're strong. This is going to be a great month for you. Awesome as well. We're going to now go and receive our morning offering. Praise the Lord. That you have an opportunity to sow into what you just heard, what you just experienced. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Again, God is not looking so much at how much you give, but he's looking at how you give. And he says, if you give sparing, you will see sparing. But if you give out, you shall receive out. So here at House of Faith, there are three ways of how you can give. Number one, you can give uh, basically through our app that we have. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Thank you. And then after we have uh, Basis of House of Faith go there, follow directions. Uh, if you never download, you can download that app, have it in your phone, and you can continue on this on, on the continued basis that you can give. And remember again, the seed that leaves your hand doesn't leave the earth. And so you can give that. Secondly, you can give this online giving. This is one of the most popular ways that you can give. Uh, that you and again, I'm going to tell you now, you do not have to be a member of House of Faith to be able to give. You just read a word that you just heard. You can soldier that word. Praise the Lord. That was not a house of faith word. That was a God word for God's people. So you can participate in that. And giving is basically going through our, our web page and going to follow directions. Finally, it says donate and give. Click on that and that you have. And so much of what you just received that you have. Now, we do, we teach tithes and offerings. Tithes is 10%. And offering is anything above that. But listen, we will appreciate anything you want to give into the kingdom of God and body of Christ to do that. And then the third way you can give uh, basically is through uh, uh, mail, or through our uh, uh, checks and money orders that you have. Post office box 985, Smyrna, Tennessee, zip code 37167. Again, you can give some checks and money orders, and we appreciate that that you give. And so we just want to believe God right now with you. That if you're sowing your offering this morning, you're sowing it on good ground. Praise the Lord. And we believe that in exchange, God gives you a rest that you have, stress free, that you have. Yes, be able to still take care of things you need to do, but now you get the re revelation and the wisdom of how to do those things to do that as well. And so let us just pray for your offering right now, that this is a seed that's going on good ground and exchange is taking place. Praise the Lord. You give as God has blessed you. In exchange, you see the rest. If you need an offering, I'll walk raise your hand and hear what joy passed out as well. And, and uh, I'll tell you, I just love to give. I mean, oh, I get excited about giving. Praise the Lord. Why is it not that I have to give? I get to give. It is not an obligation. It is an opportunity to do that, that we have. And yet, in the midst of COVID-19, in the midst of the only thing talked about, people are still giving to the Lord. And it's increased. And we believe the increase also leads to the increase of blessings on your life. So let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this opportunity that we give right now for our tithes and offerings and gifts of love. We're so excited about it, Father God, because you're an awesome God. You are a good shepherd, you're a great shepherd, and you are a hit shepherd in our lives. Thank you that you're a positional shepherd that positions us to lie down when we need to lie down to receive that comfort, to receive that rest, to receive that confidence, to receive that assurance, and the finished works of Jesus that provide for us. So we sow, and we thank you, Father God. We praise you, Father God. And we thank you, Father God, that she hears the voice of the shepherd and will follow him. And we thank you for increase. We speak increase. Hallelujah. Increase more and more and more. And our lives will never be the same. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Well, thank you again. Follow the instructions of how to give. Uh, to do that. Listen, we're going to be truly blessed as well. And we thank you, House of Faith Christian Center, for the office that you give. And as you leave, you'll be able to uh, go in and, and give an out of it. Thank you again. Praise the Lord. Remember, the seed, this offer the seed. It may leave your hand. It'll never ever be deserved. In Jesus' name, amen. But listen, uh, those who watch us by social media, I want to thank you for tuning to the broadcast this morning. Uh, uh, truly, it's been a true blessing to you. Thank you that you've taken some great copious notes, underlined some things as well. Go back and study those, and it will be a true real blessing to you. I uh, remind you this coming Wednesday, we'll go over uh, this message in greater detail. And so please, at 6 30 Eastern uh, Central Standard Time, 7 30 uh, Central Standard Eastern Standard Time, 4 30, you can get this message again in entirety as well as a thing and teach it, break it down, and you have it as well. So again, I'm Pastor Ronald D. Simmons, member of House of Faith Christian Center, three fold vision, exalted the Savior, equipping the saints, and evangelize the seven. Five purposes. Evangelism, worship, fellowship, discipleship, and ministry. Again, we love you. Until next time, remember that Jesus Lord and continue to show compassion in your action. We'll see you next time. You be blessed. God bless you.